So Notion just released something very cool. Whenever you are creating an automation, you can you click this magical button here and define a variable. And you can name the variable and put whatever you want in it, which is amazing. So you can tell, call this thing something, and then inside of it, like a little box, you can put something else. And this wouldn't be as impressive unless it could do this, which is you can edit the variables as formulas, which means that you can use formulas to fill in fields in automations, which basically opens the door for, at least in my opinion, automations to be exceptionally useful. But there is one thing that you will notice is missing. If you click on the new trigger button, you will get the same old list of triggers. We have edited the property, we have a page added, we have name, tags, and number, which is fine, but we are, don't have the variables. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a variable to use an automation, to trigger an automation, and basically do this uh, in a reasonably easy way. Uh, although with Notion, as you can see, the easiest way would be click here. We don't have that. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jordan. I grew my last company to 70 people. Uh, I worked as an engineer for 15 years before that. And uh, my last consulting client made 100 mil from our effort, basically, as the, in the company. So I know a thing or two about software. And currently, I am helping creators build products and then sell those products. Anyway, let's get let's talk about Notion because that's what you're here for. So uh, when we want to create a trigger, obviously we can directly use the formula that doesn't work. So what do we do? Uh, we'll delete this one here and I'll show you my very complicated example table, which has a name, it has a number, we can put you know number here, that's it. And we have tags and we only have one tag, that's it. Everything is you know very straightforward. The whole goal is, uh, let's say, for whatever reason, I don't like the number three. Uh, let's edit the database accordingly. The number three sucks for whatever reason. Uh, and by the way, number three is the second most favorite number be between one and ten. Seven is the number one number and number three is the second one. So if I did just offended your favorite number, I apologize. That was intentional. <laughs> anyway, um, so... Uh, we're here and in theory, what would be best if we could do is we, we update this number and suddenly this tag gets changed for, you know, the imposter tag. And uh, to do that, we want to use a formula to kind of calculate this and uh, to calculate if we actually want to run the automation or not. So there are a couple of ways you can attempt doing that and they all have their different pros and cons. Number one is the one that I use most often in my in my setup is if you create a view for this database. So let's go down here and let me make my beautiful face smaller and let's create a view. So this is going to be the number three sucks database. And here in this view, what we can do is we can filter the view in whichever way or form. Uh, uh, we want, and by we I mean you and me, there's just the two of us here unless you're watching with your whole family, which would be very weird for an Ocean tutorial. But what we can do is we can basically filter and say if the number equals three, then this is cool. So it, once we have another page, so this is page one and this is page two. Page two doesn't have a number, so it's not here. If it has a different number, it's still not here. So basically using this, we can now trigger a, a trigger a, an automation based on this view. So whenever you can create the automation, you can basically change uh, where are we. Wait, this is this makes little sense because this is called table. So this is gonna be called filtered table and you'll be able to see it and understand how this works. And I, let's hide the title. Okay, so when we create the automation, we can say we wanna do this for every page in the database or we can do this for the filtered table. When you do it for the filter table and when we do any property, uh, not sorry, not any property edited, when we do page added, what that would do is whenever we add a page to the filter table, then we're going to do something. So in this case, we'll edit the property, we'll change the tag, we'll add the imposter tag. And if I click it correctly, that would be better. And this automation now, whenever we uh, have a new item, so let's remove the tree here. H3 
and whenever you add the, the tree number, it's gonna wait for a few seconds and then it should run and add us the imposter tag. Yeah, this, this works fine, but this gets flimsy when we wanna use a real formula because if I had a field, so let's make a formula and this is just, I don't know, uh, let's find the number tree and that should be a check sign. So basically this is a simple formula we're checking if the number is equal to three. If it's three, it's gonna give us a yes, otherwise it's gonna give us a no. Very straightforward. But if we do this and we decide, hey, let's remove this filter and let's add a different filter, which is the formula and look if it's checked. Essentially doing the same thing, but automations can be a little bit wonky because right now it's saying, hey, uh, you, I don't support this filter. This is a very complicated filter and you know, you suck. So unless you're able to filter your table without using a formula, then uh, this method will be absolutely useless. If you can, this method is actually very effective and it should work a little bit faster than a few of the other ones. But um, you know, we can't use it in this situation. So we have to find a different way. So we are not gonna be using the filter table. Let's archive, uh, toggle this into an archived attempts to make this a little bit cleaner and try again. Okay, so option number two is we still wanna use the formula and whenever something happens, we want to use the formula to actually check the number and then after we check the number, we wanna update the tags. So how do we do that? we will build automation number two. This one we can delete because this is no longer working and we'll build a new one. So let's try with any property edited. In theory, we, whenever any property is edited, we should be able to trigger an automation. Now, what happens is there are two ways that this could happen basically. So here we can say, let's just tag it, tag anything. It doesn't matter right now. So whenever we edit something, we'll make this an imposter. This is not the correct automation yet, but we'll just use this one for a second. So what happens right now is if I edit this number, I'm gonna get the formula to change, which is fine. Like the, uh, uh, not the, the formula to change, the, the automation to run and then the tags to uh, set this to an imposter. This is fine actually, this can work because here we can actually use a, a property, another property, we can use, define a variable here, which is, uh, is this an imposter? And basically we can calculate the final value based on, uh, on, on the property that we just edited. It's a little bit of a pain, but we can do it. So basically here we can grab the original property, check if that property is the number, check if the number was actually three. And if the number is three, we set the tax as imposter. Otherwise we don't. That is fine, but still that fails under one important condition, which is what if this formula was from somewhere completely different? What it was from a different page and all that. That would certainly complicate things even more. Because if we didn't edit a property in this table and this formula just changed, the formula update will not trigger the automation. And that's a problem because we want the automation to be consistent and reliable and that wouldn't be the case. So how do we make this consistent, reliable, and we go around this limitation, which is kind of annoying? Well, we enter option number three, which is we're using a middle man field basically. So, not a middleman field, we were using a middleman field and a middleman automation. So we have two steps in the process, which is horribly annoying. But yeah, so I generally like making those in a separate table because that uh, feels a little bit better to me, but you don't have to do this. So let's create an inline table, uh, database, sorry. Uh, and this one is gonna be automation DB for this other thing, whatever. All right, so here we have to connect it to uh, our original table because otherwise we won't have you know anything else that we can run on it. And basically here we'll, we'll basically uh, add the specific page in record. So let's uh, type in a relation. Let's add the database and you can generally show it to, uh, you can basically put it in both places. All right, so what we can do right now is, uh, I'm not sure if we even need this one, but anyway. All right, so right now what we do is 
we create a new automation, then we are going to do any properties are uh, edited, then we are going to go to add page two, and this is gonna be the uh, automation database. So right now what we can do is whenever we edit a property, we, we, do, we want to add a new prop, a new entire new page in the automation database. So basically we're going to keep a record, a history of everything that we changed. And based on that history, we're going to be uh, running another automation that's gonna do the updates for us, which is obviously horribly, horribly inefficient, but it is what it is. So right now uh, we, we need to name it in some way. So it's gonna be uh, something we'll probably want to define a variable and we might even need to add an ID in a second. We'll see how this goes because I didn't prepare a special template for this. I'm just making this on the go. So yeah. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, first of all, we need a name, which is going to be automation record for editing and let's tag something. And that would be trigger page name. Perfect. So right now we have, uh, let's just call it trigger page name edit, which is fine. Like we right now, whenever we edit anything, we're going to create a new record in the, in the automation database, uh, which is going to say we edited something, which is nice. Like this way you can track edits in a database. So if we create a new, new property, uh, this might potentially run. I'm not sure if this is going to uh, run on a new page. No. Okay, but once we you know, we type in the name, now it should run. It's unfortunately kind of slow. So we got the old imposter automation to run and we got the page for edit to run, which is absolutely perfect. All right, so we can delete the imposter automation. It's not necessary. And we can focus on the other page. All right, so this one is working. Now let's uh, do a little bit more to this automation because this one can, can be significantly better. Let's see if we can edit the reference because the reference would be, yes, perfect. So we can add the trigger pages as the uh, reference page. This would allow us from this par part of the ocean to basically automate things. So right now uh, we we name this page for edit, but if from here I decide to, to reach page four, I can't. So let me show you how that looks. I'll delete the tax column because I don't like it. And we'll create a formula, which is gonna be um, something, whatever. So this formula, if I decide I wanted to change page four, which I, which is this, this should be a record of editing page four. If I want to do something more to page four or show, show more stuff from page four, I can do that. Because right now I have the name, I have a reference, but this reference is empty. And I have a bunch of created and last edited times, which are not very useful. So I want to actually record this and because of this little change here, which is we are adding this as the trigger page, we can. So we can change this again. It's going to take a few seconds because automations are kind of slow. And here we go. Page four edit, page four. If I edit page three now, same thing. It's going to give me page two edit and yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. And by the way, if you play around with this long enough, you can kind of automate a very good amount of tracking data for when you change stuff, which is, which can be very, very useful. But yeah, so right now we don't, we not only know when we edit stuff, we also know which page did you edit the thing on, which is almost everything we need. So here we can uh, basically use another thing, which is gonna be the number, uh, which is, uh, let's make this, an, is it an imposter formula? So we'll get the, uh, the number three sucks dot, uh, what, what did I call this number? The number three sucks should be the, yes, that should be, uh, let's do first and then let's do number. All right, we're using the first because for because uh, this can ha this list can have multiple entries because we are filling this with an automation. So uh, step back. Uh, whenever we, you use a re uh, a relation property, the relation property can contain one or multiple pages from a different database. So in this case, we're using an automation to fill this with exactly one item. So this item is always going to be the edited page. This cannot be five pages. This cannot be. Uh, six pages, this cannot be zero pages as well. Due to the fact that uh, that we are automating this database completely, this uh, this record here would be impossible. 
which means that because we always know that there's going to be only one number, we can do something like this and say, take, give me this, uh, give me the related field, give me the first one of them, because I can have more than them, more than one. So I'm saying, just give me the first one. I don't care about the other ones. When we always have one, so that works. And then give me the number inside. What that essentially does is it gives me the page two, the page two number, which is which is four in this case, and the page four number, which is two in this case. Keep in mind, this isn't the number that the page had originally. This is uh, like when I edited this before I edited this. This is a live retrieval of the number. So whenever I change this, so look at this. This says page four, the number is two. If I update this number, this number is, is also going to change. You can see that it changes faster than the automation could even run. What happens is that this is a live entry. I didn't store this. I didn't... I didn't memorize this in a in a fancy fancy way, but what that allows me to do is to basically figure out if this page, like, do we have an imposter or not? Let's see if this is enough for the automation because I'm not sure. So first of all, one thing that's great now is we can only use this when when a page is. Thank you, camera, for stopping. That was very helpful. Amazing. Anyhow, what that allows us to do is we can create the page added trigger for the automation because this thing is going to run every time we edit anything in the other page, meaning that we can just use the page added thing and not worry about it, which is perfect. Now the action, we can now edit pages in the original database. We can, uh, and now the question is how do we actually edit the correct one? So we, we don't want to edit the correct page. Uh, we don't want to edit every page. So we kind of have to compare the page to something. So here you, you see I can compare the name and it should contain some value. I can compare uh, the automation, which can work. And it can, it can show some value, although this doesn't give me any, any live data, so that's not perfect. I can compare the formula, which can be useful, yes but you know we'll see we'll see if it is and so on so this is okay but let's try something else right here in the pages we can add another field and we have something called an id so the id is, is unique and we don't need a prefix here but basically the id just gives us a unique number and you can't edit this this is this is intentional and by the way you saw that every all of those pages uh, recorded and edit because Notion automatically filled them with the, with IDs. The the IDs are something that Notion creates and ensures they're unique. So what that means is that right now in the automation, if we want to uh, edit a page, to do edit pages in the automation. No, not this one. This is the other database. Perfect, and we can compare by the ID now, which is amazing. So what that means is that right now we can actually check if the ID was the same. And if it is the same, that means it, we're, we're working with the same page. So let's uh, define a variable and see if we can do that. Because again, Notion is kind of wonky with those things. It should have all of those. It should have uh, formulas as triggers here, but it doesn't for whatever reason. Like they they forgot. I don't know. It's it's not difficult to implement. Having having formulas uh, like having a formula as a filter is not a big deal. But they forgot. I don't know. Anyway, so we will still use the page added because that was the original trigger. And then the variable. Let's see the formula. Let's see page created. Perfect. Not page creator. Page trigger page. Yes. Perfect. Okay. This is this is exactly what we want. So this is the page. Uh, uh, this is the update page record. I will name this correctly so this is clear because this this can be a little bit difficult. So this update page record is basically this row that we just created from changing something. All right. So this this can be a little bit wonky. Uh, let me add an action uh, equals. Can I? I don't think I can use the variable here. Hmm. That's very annoying. It's shockingly annoying. Okay. That's fun. Hmm. 
anyway let me remove this and and then i'll show you how this works and then we'll go back to the other thing it's still fixable it's just more annoying anyhow let's create a text field and basically uh whenever this automation runs uh we'll add this and we'll edit the property of text and yeah here i can use variables in the other place i can't because reasons anyway so update page record Perfect. Okay, so you can see that whenever uh, I add a new page, it's going to use the page and basically uh, set the text to the same page. I'm, I'm not sure if I can use a formula here. Let's see. Yeah, I can. Okay, so uh, update page record dot name. Cool. Okay, so what I expect to happen is whenever I add a new page, so I change something in the first table. After I change something in the first table, the second automation records table creates a new record which says page, whatever, edit. And then this automation should hit and basically say, uh, create, uh, update this text field to, again, page, whatever, record, uh, edit, sorry. Uh, plus hi there. Let's add a, a, a funky text so it's a little bit more interesting. Okay, so nothing happened because that's just the automation, but right now I expect two automations to run in a row. Let's see this. I change this, you can see the something thing changes immediately everywhere. And now we have to wait again for the automation system to tick. I think it takes like five seconds or something. Let's see if this works. It should, but let's see. Because again, Notion is funny with those. Okay, trigger page. Yeah, this should be fine. yeah okay so this is funny you, you it doesn't seem to allow me to chain automations which is obviously amazing okay this challenge gets deeper it shouldn't be a challenge by the way like this isn't uh some you know glorious thing it's just you know use this thing to change the other thing but yeah, this is uh, this is amazing. Yes, amazing. All right. So uh, as I'm seeing, this is not going to work as an approach. So because for some reason, whenever we add a page to to here with an automation, the second automation doesn't trigger. So we can't change those too effectively. Uh, there might be a way to do this. Uh, probably it's going to be using a changed property, but I'm not going to go into that because that's going to make things a little bit more complicated like a lot more complicated because I don't, uh, I would rather as complicated that I don't want to make them. But here we'll have to do something different, uh, even more different. All right, so let's ditch this entire approach, which is absolutely silly considering how long we spend on this. But this is how Notion development works. You, you try a bunch of things and then if they don't work, you try something else. All right, I think we will use the formula and Okay, so uh, approach number three, I think. Wait, wait. I, I was I was going to keep those. Yeah, let me keep this. Let me keep this. I think this is this is fun to see in the in the end. All right, so let's keep this. It's fine. It's not in the way too much. And I'll just hide the properties. I added I added a Z to that one, but it's okay. Cool. Okay. Right. Well, we have we have the starting state, and we're twenty three minutes in. And I'm a little bit annoyed because Notion is not being co cooperative here. Like I've done this with 7,000 other apps. This is by far the, the most contrived, you know, e errors you can find. But anyway, we can still get through that. Okay, so we have this starting point again. And hopefully you learned a bunch of things from, from all of this jabbering. Number three, option number three is we want to do a very complicated calculation using a formula and then use that calculation to conditionally update the tax which is horribly annoying but yeah and i'm not sure i'm not sure how to update those fields to be fair i'm not sure if i can use a string or something but let's see if if it doesn't work I, i'm gonna cop out and change this from from a, a, a multi-select property to um, just a number or something because uh, figuring out how to update those can take me like five minutes of reading around and that go that's going to be even more annoying for you considering all of the fun attempts so far but yeah so create a new automation whenever s 
anything in the in this exchange. You can even add whenever a page is added and whenever a, a, a property is edited. Like it doesn't matter. Um, and now we're gonna define a variable. This is gonna do a lot of the a lot of the magic here. So basically, what we wanna do is we wanna add the filter here. In essence, what's happening is uh, whenever you uh, let's do n, not o. Yes. All those triggers? Can you do any? No. Because of reasons. It's when all all triggers occur, it's okay. But when I do any, so O and any, the difference is O means both of them happen at the same time, which would be very unlikely with those two. So I want any, which means whenever I add a page or edit a page, I want this to run. But for whatever reason, I can do this. So I will remove the page edit and I'll just do property edited because that's the more common thing. Again, weird, <laughs> weird constraints that you can see all over the place for reasons. But who cares? We're engineers by in, in our hearts. We can solve those problems always. So what happens is that we want to calculate the final value that we want from the imposter field. So uh, obviously, uh, we will start writing a formula and we can do this if so the if thing works we give it a condition if the condition is is true it gives us the first option and if it's false it gives us se the second option so it once you, when you have an if you have a, the condition comma first first result comma second result that's it so the condition is uh, let's do import uh, not imposter it's it's the number uh, and this is the trigger page. So trigger page is the page that we're currently working with. So I edit the property of a page and this is the this is the trigger page in this situation. So this one has a number, right? So we want this number uh, uh, to check this. This is the, the, the formula that we need, right? This is the, the formula that's going to trigger this. This is probably going to be different for you. I'm using a very simple formula, which is yeah, I want the number to be equal to three. This can be any formula you want, basically. So in one, like if this formula that we're going to filter by is what we want it to be, in this case, now the number three, again, oversimplified, this probably is gonna be very complicated, for, like more complicated for you, uh, but you get the idea. So if this is the, uh, this formula is correct, then we're going to actively change the field. If it's not correct, then we're not changing the field. But because we can't filter the actions, <laughs> we have to be uh, special again, uh, which means that uh, we are checking if this formula is correct. And if this is correct, we're going to give the, the field the updated value. So this here would be updated, updated value. And if it is not, we're going to give it the old value, right? So in some way, we have to figure out the old value and we have to figure out the updated value. So... The old value is the trigger page in this case, and that's going to be the tax. So this is just the old tax. That's it. And the updated variable would be the imposter. That's it. And I'll try with a string. Hopefully a string will work. Let's save this. Let's rename this to uh, conditionally update uh, the imposter. Okay. So this, in theory, should work. Uh, after I add the actual action, which is the edit property, which is we need to eventually edit the tax and uh, edit custom formula. Yes, that's good. Uh, that would be conditionally update. Okay, perfect. And this one has a, a return type of unknown uh, dot string. substring let's do this plus trigger page or tags let's try this perfect works from the first go so this is a hack here uh, basically whenever i added this the first time it doesn't recognize this tags field as an uh, as a as the correct type so it basically is, uh, this is an unknown type to notion and it tells me you cannot set the tags to tags, you have to set them to a text or a, or a bunch of texts, which is annoying because, you know, I, I have a text here, but 
in any case, I'm just simply uh, appending or adding a, a, a string of text in front of the other text. So imagine I had the I had the I had the text of you know A B C, and in front of it I added an extra letter, the letter I know Z. So I had Z A B C. This is appending the letter Z. Here I'm appending nothing, which is absolutely ridiculous. But what that does, it it fools notion into changing this to a to a, to a text, and because it changes this to a text, it allows me to actually run this thing. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting app. Anyway, we can make it run. All right, so we create this, and in theory, what this is going to do is whenever we change this to something that's not an imposter number, it should run uh, and update this to an empty string. Hopefully, it doesn't work. Amazing. Let's try uh, doing the opposite then. Let's remove the imposter and let's make this to a tree and let's see if that works. Uh, this should be a number, not a, an E. I said three. And let's see if this is fine. Yes. Okay, so we managed to get the formula to work in one direction, not the other direction, which is imperfect, but we'll get it working the other way around. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so we have... Oh, this is the, the old automation. I need to name everything when I make so many examples because it's get, getting confusing. The real, the real uh, stuff. Cool. Okay. So this is the uh, conditionally update the imposter. Everything is working. The only reason this isn't working is because right now we have basically only one check, which is we're setting the tags to this condition. Actually, no, this should work. Hmm. I think this empty string here is kind of messing it up. So if we remove this, that would be incorrect, yes. So it seems that this thing map current plus, let's try this. That should be a list of text, thank you very much. It's still not a list of text, which is uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, can we do something like this? Ah. So that's why I told you th about the, the tags. If this wasn't a tag, this this would have been significantly easier. But let's uh, let's okay. Let's do let's do none. I'll, 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 I'll cop out again because this, this just makes things significantly easier. Uh, but in general, what you want to do is you, you, you need to figure out to, to a way to get around the notion annoyance with tags. This isn't what you came for. This is, this is the formula that you're triggering the automation with. So what is essentially happening, because you're not here for, for the like how to manipulate tags. This isn't the, the, the topic of the video. The topic is how do we use the formula to ch to to ch to run an automation based on this formula, and what that thing does. Let me use let me add the non tag here. So what that that does right now is we and we check for any property edited, which is inefficient, but that's what we have. So everything that gets edited will trigger this automation, but we want the automation to do an empty run, so to speak, every single time that that we don't want it to run. And every time we want it to run, we want it to, to have a, a normal run, which actually does the thing that we want. So we are basically inserting our, our filter here and we have two states. The, the first state that we want, the, that we can have is, this is a, f a full run. This is the automation runs technically. So because the automation runs, we give it the full, you know, the, we give it the full name the full final result that we want. And when the automation doesn't run, we give it the empty result that, that just doesn't mean anything. So in this case, this is gonna be mark imposters with attack, with attack. So this automation that marks imposters with attack, whenever it, it runs, it uses the filter here. And then based on this filter, it would either mark imposters or not do anything in this case is this is just an empty operation it doesn't do it doesn't do anything all right so let's give it a shot and see if this works this should work 
uh, in this point. This shouldn't do anything right now because we changed three to three, which you know it's irrelevant. But right now, if I make this a four, this is this is a five, and this is a one. I said one. Uh, those should update to none. All three of those. Yes, perfect. And now when I change this to a tree, this should become an imposter. After 15 minutes of waiting. And if I change this to any other number, let, let's say 15 or 23 or whatever, those are, those are going to technically still update to none, but they're already none, so nothing happens. So in essence, this is exactly the effect that we want. We want if the filter is correct, if the formula says, you know, this thing should change for this thing to change. If if the formula doesn't, we want nothing to happen. So in this case, if the formula uh, says this this number is an imposter, so if the number is three, then this is going to change to an imposter every single time. But if it's any other number, this is going to ch change to none. But because it's already none, nothing changes. So the final effect is we are running the automation based on. A on a formula based on this formula and we can do this with any formula here and you can add any, any value here and this here by the way can be very very crazy like you can have 17 lines of text here uh, which can be a little bit daunting to, to make but yeah so a final tip because I understand that those can be significantly more difficult for more for most people who haven't spent a whole lot of time on engineering. You can see that even I, with all of my experience, I didn't expect half of the stuff that Notion threw at me. I, I immediately knew a way out because I've done this a lot of times with code and not just, you know, uh, silly no code tools, but it's still something that can be very daunting. So here's something you can do. You can... Uh, there are so many windows right now. Uh, this is, by the way, this is Phil. Phil is very cool. Phil got me to think about this problem. Thank you, Phil. And hopefully this helps you even though it's super long. Sorry for being super long. It's like 40 fucking minutes. Uh, 40 uh, beep minutes. I'm not editing those, so yeah. Whoops. Anyway, so uh, if, you, if you go to Cloud, you can uh, take uh, Notion's documentation. So you can go to Notion documentation formulas. This is a final tip. You can take this page, this very, very hefty page, print and save it as a PDF and upload this to Cloud. And Cloud is going to be able to generate formulas for you. It's not perfect and it's going to work better if you give it a bunch of example formulas as well. So if you upload that and if you upload a bunch of examples, then Cloud generates very, very reasonable formulas. It needs a little bit of help sometimes, but it's generally doing very well. And more importantly, it can help you debug your own formulas. It can help you figure out what's wrong. It's not perfect. It does some mistakes, but in a pinch, it does a, a lot more work than, you know, you could do uh, studying this, watching 7,000 YouTube videos. So, yeah, hopefully this helps. <sighs> and we're done. This is the simple way how you can run a, an automation based on a formula. And it only took us 38 minutes and 17 seconds uh, because uh, Notion is an elegant app. But I'm still very happy. Like this, this was not possible a week ago. This is sti still a massive update for Notion. I'm very happy that we have that. Like it could have been worse. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, annoyingly difficult, but I hope this video teaches you a bunch of things. There is a lot of Notion stuff that you won't see in too many places. And there are very few people who, who actually get it and can actually do it because most people working with Notion aren't engineers, so they don't understand the premise behind all of this. But they also might be speaking in clearer language because... I am an engineer, so that, that affects it. So, yeah, hope hopefully that was clear. Bye. Sorry for taking so long. And, you know, enjoy all the learning because I gave you a lot of good stuff.